ought not to be doing and have to do on Sunday. But when you submit your spirit to the spirit of God, God will come into this place on this last first Sunday of the year and he will say something that will cause you to move forward toward the most sacred hour in the year, which is that moment between the old year and the new year. And the truth of the matter is, every year has its number. It may be my number, it may be your number, but every year has its number. And before January 1st comes in, the year is going to claim again its number. It, its number may not be any of us who are here today. It may be one of our relatives, our close friends, but every year has a number it must maintain and so you have 30 more days and the question becomes what will you do with those next 30 or so days less than 30 what will you do in the last month of this year what is it that you want God to do what is it that you want God to do after this year into 2020 I've constantly said to you that 2020 will be a prosperous year. Financially, we will be fine. But it will be one of the most immoral years in history. What are we fighting? What are we fighting in America today? What are we fighting in the world today? We're not fighting politics. We're not fighting political leaders. We're not fighting racial disparity we're not fighting black and white issues or black brown and white issues those are not our issues today satan wants you to focus in on those things we are fighting evil at its highest level today and next year you shall see evil and the lion will roar to and fro seeking whomever he may devour and the church must get strong and sincere. And the church must march, not walk, but march. The church must move. What is it that you want God to do? Name three things today in your mind and your heart that you need God to do for you. Three things. Don't, 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 don't. Don't just ask him for the same thing you've been asking for the last 20 years. He's going to grant you that. He wants you to come to him. He says, I'm sitting on the throne December 3rd, December rather. I'm sitting on the throne right now and I'm the king. What do you want, servant? When you get those three things in your mind, in your heart, could you just lift your hand up? Could you just lift your hand up? If you don't have three things in your mind, keep your hands down. But keep your hands up. I want to see everybody who's a Christian. Jesus says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door will be open unto you. And above all, if you're not saved right now, if you have not ex accepted Jesus Christ in your heart, if you just came to church just to come to church, You've got to go a little further today. You cannot allow yourself to walk out of that door without saying yes to God. I want you in my heart. I want you in my spirit. I want to leave. I give myself to you. Once you say that, and you believe that he made the supreme sacrifice for you on Calvary by dying and going to the grave. But rising from the grave, he has taken your place and you have a right to the tree of life again. What God wants for you, he wants you to enter back into the garden. He wants you back in there where you are safe and secure, where your spirit was closely aligned to God himself. You're walking in the image of God. That's where he wants you at. He wants you back there. And you can go back to that place, the right to the tree of life. And if you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ and you're free pardon before service is out I want you to do that now do you have those three things that you want now I want you to declare them in the name of Jesus and I want you to open your eyes and turn to somebody and tell them at least one thing you need God to do for you before the 30 days is out 
If you can, if it's real private, tell them, hey, I just need you to pray for me. Turn to your neighbor right now and tell them what you need from God. Go on, tell, go on, tell them. You can tell them one thing. You can tell them one thing. That's your brother. That's your sister. Amen. That's Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Did you, did, you, did you tell it like you really meant it? Amen. Now give your neighbor a hug and tell him, I love you in spite of yourself, in spite of myself. Amen. 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 Oh, you could do a better hug than that. That was a weak hug. Amen. Give God some praise in the house one more time. Amen. Turn to your Bible to Genesis, the fifth chapter. Genesis, the fifth chapter. Say Genesis, the fifth chapter. Around the 24th verse, I want you to turn to Genesis, the, 20, the 24th verse, around that area. Genesis, the 24th verse is going to be our, ver voice to, our verse today. If there's anything that I want God to do for me within the next 20-some days or so, I want him to walk with me. I want him, say I want him, to walk with me. There is a song that says, walk with me, Lord, walk with me all along this tedious journey. Isn't the journey tedious and tough sometimes? Life is just tough sometimes. Life is sometimes tedious. There are sometimes you're riding high on cloud nine. I think it was the temptations who said that. Riding high on, on the cloud. Now, whatever. The, the truth of the matter, there are other times that life can become what the old saint said, tedious. Say tedious. Tedious means tough and rough. And, and if I want something from God right now, it is that I need the Lord. Is there anybody in the house who will say with me, I need the Lord to walk with me all along this tedious journey every day it can be rough and tedious and sometimes the people who are tedious and make your life rough and tough is not folk on the outside it's folk that you're sleeping with on the inside I wish I had two witnesses in the house and so my prayer is that I want God to walk with me if you don't believe that it can be tough inside of a person's home, the person to whom they're sleeping with. Then let me tell you a story about a man who had a problem in his marriage. The problem, he said, he said, he said this, he said, the problem in my marriage began when my wife started taking her claim on things even before we got married. Anybody know anybody like that? Me and ain't said nothing. He said he, she insisted on putting her name on everything that was mine before we even said, I do. Simply put, he said, I did not like it. Say, he did not like it. He said to himself, what was the big hurry? This never sat well with him because he said the scales were unbalanced. And then the brother said this, like some brothers do. He said, the cars are mine. The house was mine. The bank account with the larger balances were mine. Everything, he said, is mine. The vacation home in sunny beach, Florida, is mine also. And all she had to do, he said, was just three or four things. Just show up and meet my needs. Things, he simply put, was... All I wanted was three square meals a day, uh, three square meals a day, a house, clothes, and car maintained along with all of that. Give me as much loving as I, I can take. Y'all off of sleeping. <laughs> he said that seemed like a minuscule, minuscule request. And then he said she couldn't even do that. And then he says, now all problems have broken out into my home. And she has the nerve to move out and into my condo on the other side of town. And then he closed this with these words. He says, I've done everything, say everything, for her. 
And he says, you would have thought that she would have been grateful, but no, let her go with her self-centered self. My question is, who was self-centered? It, it sounds like the brother did not understand when I said that I need God to walk with me. Is there anybody in the house need God to walk with them? Well, it's one thing for you to walk with God, and it's another thing for God to walk with you. Listen to what Genesis, the Genesis writer says here in Genesis, in Genesis, the uh, fifth chapter. In verse, six, in verse 21, he says, in verse 21, he says, And Enoch lived sixty and five years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch lived 60 and five years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch, here's what it says, walked with God after he had begat Methuselah, who, Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughter. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years. And here is our text. And Enoch, say and Enoch, walked with God and he was not, for God took him. Say, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Where did he take him? Well, the New Testament says it this way. Enoch was not found because God translated him. In other words, it meant that Enoch, all of a sudden, was missing. Enoch was not found. Enoch walked with God all of his life, and all of a sudden, he is not found. Can you imagine that? Here, 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 here your father in the house uh, during dinner time, having prayer all the time, and all of a sudden, your father is gone. Here is a brother in the neighborhood. He's in the neighborhood, and all of a sudden, he's missing in the neighborhood. He used to go to work at a certain place. He used to do a certain kind of thing every day. And all of a sudden, he's gone. Say he's gone. he's gone. The text says he was not found. He was not found. He was not found. Can you imagine that? In church. I wish I could preach this thing, Larry. In church. He's not in church on Sunday morning. He's been there all the other Sundays. And all of a sudden, he is not found in church. And suddenly, everybody starts to miss him. I wonder if you stopped showing up on Sunday morning, who would miss you? Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm not sure that you would be missed on Sunday morning. Turn to your neighbor behind you and say, neighbor, I'm not sure if you would be missed on Sunday morning. You see, the truth of the matter is everybody does not participate in the worship experience. So often we come to church waiting for somebody to shout us up. We're waiting for the choir to sing us up. We're waiting for the preacher to preach us up. And I constantly say that your worship ought not to start when you come inside of the church, but your, shirt, your worship should have started the moment you opened your eyes and started saying thank you to the Lord. Have I got a witness in the house? The Lord did not have to wake you up this morning. The Lord did not have to start you on your way. But somebody said, had it not been for the grace of God, I would not be where I am today. Have I got one witness in the house? Would you be missed? 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 You be missed? Or would you be like that? those persons? Have you heard, heard those cases where somebody dies in their home and for weeks nobody knew they were dead? And then suddenly, somebody finds out that they've been dead for weeks because nobody missed them. The text says that Enoch was missed. Say Enoch was missed. He was missed, and the community wanted to know where could he be found. And the text says he was not found in the New Testament. The question becomes, why was Enoch missed so? It simply says this. Y'all, I could just go on home since y'all are still sleepy from the rain outside. The Bible says the reason why he was missed is because he walked 
with God. If there's anybody that people miss, it's actually people who know how to walk with God. Now, I know it's easy to walk with God when things are well, but is it really easy to walk with God when things are not so well? Can you still walk with God when you start to lose in your health and strength? Can you still walk with God when you start to lose in your house? Can you still walk with God when you start to lose in your spouse? Can you still walk with God when you start to lose in your children? Can you still walk with God when you start to lose in your mind? Can you still walk with God when things are not sunshine? Can you still walk with God when it's not sunshine out there, but rather you wake up when it's dreary? You see, somebody didn't walk with God this morning. They looked out, saw a little rain on the outside and said, I ain't going to church this morning. Well, what would happen if God got up that morning and said, well, I ain't going to wake you up this morning. Well, I ain't going to start you on your way. Well, I'm not going to give you health and strength. What would happen if God did like we do to God? I wish I had a witness in the house. The text says, I think I could preach it anyhow. Look at me. But the text says that Enoch walked with God sometime in life. You've got to do like the shepherd said we need to do. David said every now and then when we get to the valleys called shadows of death, we've got to learn how to walk with God. He leadeth me beside the still water. He restores my soul. Yea, though I walk. I, I wonder, is there anybody here today who's had to walk alone in death? The text says, an Enoch walked with God. He didn't care whether or not there was a big choir on Sunday morning. He didn't care if there was a lot of preaching in the pulpit. He didn't care if anybody else showed up for church on Sunday morning. He didn't care if nobody else had prayed. But rather he said, I'm going to walk. I wish I could get that in your spirit today. Because the truth of the matter is we don't know what 2020 going to bring. And some of us might have to just walk this thing through step by step, day by day. The text says he was not found. God took him. He was translated. But Enoch walked with God. I, I don't know about you, but I want to hang around more people who walk with God. Don't you get tired sometime of folk? who are in and out with God. Some days they're on fire with the Lord. The next day they cool. And I feel as God said he felt in the book of Revelation, folk who are not hot nor cold, but rather lukewarm makes him sick. Sometimes lukewarm Christians make me a little sick. Have I got a witness in the house? They hot. As long as you're doing well, but the moment you start to having some challenge, they get a little cool. Uh, they, they hot when you go in the hospital for one or two days, but don't stay there a week. Don't, sick, don't, don't, don't stay sick too long. Have you ever heard that? Because ain't nobody going to show up. I wish I had a witness. In the, but I want folk to hang around. I want to hang around folk who know how to walk with God. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. I, I want some folk around me who know what it means to have the Lord staying on your mind all the time, meditating day and night. Then they shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. I want those kind of folk. And if you want to make a resolution for 2020, make a resolution that there's some folk you're going to let go. And there's other folk you're going to ask God to put inside of your life. The people who attract me the most are people who walk with the Lord. I've got a picture, you know, inside of my house. I love this picture. I just got it not long ago. It is a picture where uh, you have Martin King in the picture and you have Nelson Mandela in the picture. You have even Brother Malcolm X in the picture. And it's a picture with even Barack Obama. Say Barack Obama. Yeah, they're sitting out on a porch having coffee together. And, and I'm so attracted to this particular picture, not because uh, I think they're talking to me all the time. You know, some folk look at pictures and all of a sudden uh, they, see, they seem to think that the picture is talking to them. Uh, they don't talk to me. I just love the picture because they remind me of their lives. I do believe that they were walking with the Lord. I think that Martin King was walking with God all the time. And when he got to, uh, when he got to uh, Memphis, Tennessee, I believe he could accept 
uh, the, the mountaintop experience because he had been walking with God through all those struggles of racial tensions in America. I believe uh, that even in the case of Nelson Mandela, a brother who was in prison for 27 years, released and all of a sudden becomes the president of South Africa. And even in the midst of all those issues that he had as a new black and only president, first president of that particular nation, he was constantly walking with God. Even when his wife said, Nelson, you've been away from me too long. We cannot continue this relationship as husband and wife. I've got to leave. Nelson kept on making it through all those kinds of issues. Why? Because he kept on walking with God. He refused to allow God to leave him. And in some case, to some degree, I think if you study the life of Malcolm X, he was not a true Muslim, you know. At one point, he even left the nation of Islam and joined Orthodox Islamic movement. But at the end of the day, somebody asked him, uh, does he believe in Jesus Christ? And if you read some of the biographers, they'll say, yes. He said, I believe in Jesus Christ as Savior. Maybe Malcolm was to some degree walking with God. We admire people who walk with God. Mother Teresa was a little lady out of Calcutta, but yet still people were attracted to the small lady. Why? Because she was walking with God. I, I had a grandmother. I had a mother. I had a father. I loved my mother, my father, my grandfather, my uncles, mine. And why? Because they were walking with God. And people inside of the church who I know was walking with God, they were attracted. There's something magnetic about people who know how to walk with God. People who don't get discouraged so quickly. People who said, I'll trust in the Lord on land or sea, wherever I may be. There's something attractive about people who believe that God will make a way out of nowhere. There's something attractive to, to it, it attracts me when people say, I love the Lord. He heard my cry and did it every ground. There's something attractive. There's a kind of halo over those people. There's a kind of magnetism inside of those people. I love folks who don't mind walking with God. What they loved about Enoch, we missed him because he knew how to sing the songs of Zion. He knew how to shout about Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He knew about Adam and how God had delivered Adam and Eve. He knew about, uh, he, he said, he walked with God. Come on, stand on your feet. Say, he walked with God. And was not, he was not found. One day you're going to look for me. And I won't be found either. But if you hear my home going, don't worry about me. I'm just another soldier. Go on home. He was not found. If, if, if you showed up missing and not found, where would we find you? There's only two places that you can end up. Either you're on your way to heaven and so glad about it. And can I tell you something I've been missing and haven't told you lately? If you think of all of your loved ones who have passed on, we know you will see them again. You give God some praise. They're absent from the body, present with the Lord. You're going to see them. Say, I'm going to see them again. But, but you need to know the heaven where God the Father is is not our final destination. Y'all got quiet. You see, the Bible says that one day God is going to recreate heaven a new heaven and a new earth. And that one day, Jesus is going to come back with all of his holy host, an angelic being and followers, saints. And he's going to reestablish his kingdom on earth. Can I help you? Anybody want to be helped today? Here it is, he's gonna reestablish his new kingdom on earth. Now heaven is still going to exist up there. That's why you get temporary bodies up there. But then he's going to come down here and recreate the earth, this earth, 
as you recall it during the time of Adam and Eve the place of paradise and the Bible says he's going to bring all of those saints back down here and those who are in the grave he's going to raise them up and we're going to live here on earth the new heaven can I help you out did I lose anybody I said this to one of my deacons and he looked at me crazy there is what you call there's what you call the nation and then there's what you call the commonwealth of a nation and in a nation for example in England you have a king or a queen but then in a commonwealth which is an extension of the nation you also have a kind of king or queen. Let, let me help you out. The United States was almost a commonwealth. We had the king of England, and so we wanted to establish a kind of king of America that we called a president. And this was really supposed to be a kind of commonwealth of England. What am I saying? I'm saying that Jesus would never become our ultimate, our ultimate and forever king unless he has a kingdom. I, I think I went too deep, didn't I? Just got to be read some revelation. What I'm saying is that one day my mama is coming back here on earth. My daddy is coming back here on earth. My deacons are coming back here on earth. My ministers who have died are coming back here on earth and we're going to be living here on earth as it is in heaven. I don't know who that's for today. But let me tell you some privileges. Say some privileges real quick. Some privileges of walking with God. The first privilege is that you now become a friend of Jesus. You become a friend of Jesus, which means that now you are in companionship with somebody greater than yourself. That's why we sing the song, I want Jesus to walk with me. You get companionship. And when you get companionship with Jesus, it also suggests that you can be honest with him. Say honest with him. I'm going to preach this later on. It also means that you are understood. You can, you're understood. Say understood. Y'all throwing me off here. You, you're understood. It also means that you're going to be with Jesus for the rest of your life. Can you imagine that? As you bow your heads in a word of thanks unto God. In a word of thanks unto God. See, there's a little distraction going on here. Just take the person by the hand next to you. Talk to God right now. Tell him that you want to walk.